a class has 25 students. Let's begin just by jotting down the important information, okay? 25 students in total. 19 of them study at least one of art and music. 19 of them study at least one, okay? So if I write that down, 19, they study at least one, that is art or music or art and music. Do you agree with that? Okay. There's only one category of student that's not included in that 19, right? So they study art or music, sorry, I should put a slash, or art and music, right? Which group of students is left out by that? The ones that don't study either. Does that make sense? So immediately, and we're going to put this onto our diagram in a second, you can see it there, right? Immediately I can make an inference. So even though I'm not all the way through the question, I'm going to jot down now um, from here, right? Therefore, six study neither. Is that okay? Tracking along so far? Great. 19 of them study at least one. 16 of them study at most one, which is a really weird way of saying it, by the way. At most, one. Okay, let's, now let's think about this. And I'm going to just put my hand up and say, actually, when I first read this question, I completely misread that. I was like, at most, one? What does that include? Now, you know how I said here, we've got an exhaustive list of everyone included in the 19. Do you agree? People who study art, people who study music, people who study both. So let's think about who is included in this group of 16. Would they be included in this group if they studied art? Yes. 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 So they study art, they would be in this group. If they just studied music, would they be in this group? Yep. Yep. Yes, they would. <clears throat> we know that they won't be included if they study both, right? Because at most one. But there's one other group that's included in here. Have a think about it. It says at most one. So if I'm a student who doesn't study either of these, I study zero of them. Does that make sense? And zero is included in at most one. At most means everything and below. Does that make sense? I'll say that again, right? At most includes either or neither. That's weird, right? I think that's the curveball in the question. Okay, so, so we've got this, right? And then two, it says two students are chosen at random from the class. Okay, so that doesn't tell us anything about that. So we're ready now to start to construct this Venn diagram. Maybe the numbers are starting to make sense to you, okay? So hopefully you drew a box of some kind. If you only drew circles, you're in trouble because you couldn't represent this group here. Does that make sense? So this is our class. I've got an art circle and a music circle. Let's call that A and M. So I know that in this big rectangle, it's going to add up to 25. So that I know. Okay. Which of these other numbers can I immediately put on the diagram? Six. Six, right? Where does it go? Six? The bottom right corner. On the outside, yeah. It's somewhere around here. Okay, I'll put it in the bottom right corner at Ishan's suggestion. Okay, so if that's six, I then have to say, hmm, I've got one, two, three other spots that I've got to fill in. Okay, what do I put there? Now this is actually, again, another curveball in the question. I actually don't know, and I will never know. There is not enough information in the question to know what either of these numbers is. Okay? So I'm just going to put that right out there. If you, saw, if you started to put numbers in there, you were guessing, basically. But this number in here, I'm just going to call it Z. This number I can work out. Question or thought? I just, I just realized how, because when you remove the, one, the neither from the A, uh -huh. the C, yes, yes. you get 10. Yep. Which is the people that do only A or M. Very good. Both. Yes, okay. So that means both are going to have to be 9. Uh, so you get 9. Okay, so let's get there, right? 19 minus. Okay, so let's, let's, get, let's see if we can get there. Okay, so what I've got right now, what I've got right now is that I've got to try and work out. I've, I've dealt with this 6, right? Um, and now I have to sort of do something with these two here. Do you agree with that? I've got to try and fit them together in some way, okay? But to do that, I've got to get this group here, which I just told you, you'll never know. You don't have enough information to know just art and just music. Is that okay? Sorry? Z score, right? Uh, well, I'm not going to call it a Z score because that's a different thing, but this number, Z, oh, right. it's, just, it's just a letter. I mean, I could have called it alpha or beta or whatever, okay? So how am I going to work this out, right? Well, 
16, 16 are art or music or neither. Do you agree with that? That's just art, just music or neither. So I can say that that 16 is x plus y plus 6. Do you agree with that? Is that okay? There's the only art, the only music, and then the neither. So that tells me if I subtract 6 from both sides, x plus y is 10. ten right? So this here, x plus y is 10. That's, that's what I put. I think I even chose those letters, right? x plus y equals 10. I don't know if it's like 3, 7, or 5, 5, or 1, 9. No idea. Not enough information in the question. Okay. But there is enough information for me to then go from this back up to this guy. Right? Do you see that? So I've now accounted for the only art students and the only music students, which means that the only group left over within that 19 is the art and music students, the one who do both. Okay? So therefore, I can say up here that 10 plus Z. Do you agree? There's the 10 here and then the Z. That should give me 19. Is that okay? So that is where in my diagram I then say, oh, this is, oh, this is 9 who study both. Is that okay? Now, I actually think it's very sneaky. Um, if, if I were you, if you want to make this a judgment on your piece of paper, I think 16 part A, the one we just did, I think it should be worth 2 marks and I think part B should be worth 1. Just a personal opinion, not that it matters, we're not measuring or anything like that, but if you wanted to, there's a lot of work doing there. Okay. <laughs> well, Nessa didn't write this paper. Okay, so then part B kind of follows from there. Two students get selected at random. Do you remember that? Find the probability that both students chosen study exactly one of art and music. So how do I work this out? What's the fraction that leads to this? Probability equals? So what do you think, sir? Well, Say that again. I use the notation. Okay, you can use the notation. So I'm looking for two different things, right? I'm looking for first student is art and music, right? So um, art or music, that's the first student. And then you're looking for another one, right? So these are two different students. Okay, student one and student two, let's call them. Okay, now I've got to work out the probability of one, and then do I add or do I multiply it to the probability of the other? Well, it's, if it's A and B, it's the independent events. So, oh, they're independent of A or B. Right? Hmm, are they independent? Let's have a think about this, right? Now, I think the easiest way to understand this is I need both of these things to happen, right? They both have to happen. I've got to pick a student one and a student two. And you can hear it in the way I say it, and, right? It's like, well, that means I've got to multiply. They've got to be included together, okay? So therefore, what's the probability of the first student studying just one of them? Have a look. How many students do study just one? Have a look. It's going, to be, it's going to be the X and the Y groups, right? They study either art or music. So that means there's 10 of them. Do you agree? Yeah. And then I say, well, I'm dividing by however many students there are 25. in total, which is 25, right? That's the first student. And then I want the other student to be in that same group, right? But there aren't 10 of them anymore because I just chose one. So how many are left? 15. Are you trolling me, Max? <laughs> there were 10 before. I've chosen one successfully, so there are nine left, but there are also no longer 25 students in the whole group to choose from, right? So there are 24. So this gives you nine out of, from memory, 600, which should simplify to... Um, is that right? Yeah, three out of... Did I get that right? Some, no, 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 wait. No, sorry, it's 90. It's 90. I'm, like, I'm missing a zero. That's, that's 3 out of 20. Is that okay? Okay.